Good evening, everybody, and how are we all doing today? Hopefully, I'm coming through nice and loud. We just check because I'm having troubles, technical troubles again tonight. Uh, yet my sound is going through. Excellent. For some reason, my microphone decided to turn itself off when I was setting everything up. How are we all doing anyway? It is a rather blustery, windy, wet day here on the south coast of the UK. It's a Sunday evening, of course, and it means it's time for the Sunday night live show. Now, coming up today, we're going to be doing a leek grow along. So I hope you're all prepared for that. Got your leek seeds ready, got your compost ready, got your containers ready, and uh, got your tips on how to grow leeks. Um, Firstly, well, before that, we'll go for what I've been up to over this last week. But first, let's see if anybody's actually watching. And I can see, yes, lots of people watching. So we've got Bally Cillian, good evening to you. Philly SPB, good evening to you. Rebecca Hawkins, good evening to you. Anna Jones, good evening to you. Oracle, good evening to you. What about ye all veg grower army at the ready? Uh, Turbo Spin, good evening, veg grower army. From the very wet and windy Birmingham. Glad it's not here that's wet and windy. Uh, grow Veg, best thing gardening relate all week has been waiting for the Veg Grower podcast. That's very kind of you to say. Uh, Ian Meadows, good evening to you. Money Boots, good evening to you. Hope you're well, buddy. Hargrave Gas, good evening to you. Hope you've all had a great week. Uh, hello, Nigel from Bally Cillian. Um, Digwell, hi all. I promise not to get names mixed up tonight, indeed. Uh, not an easy task sometimes, even I get names mixed up. Uh, Richard Golden, hello to you. Hope you're well. Uh, Bally, oh no, sorry. Toby Oxford, good evening to you. Hope you are well as well. Nicole, uh, uh, Nicole Cornish Heaven, so it's a bit slow there. Nicole Cornish Heaven, good evening to you. Uh, Graham Arnold, good evening to you. And Kate Spratt, good evening to you. Uh, so please do keep letting us, giving us your comments and let us know what you've been up to in your own allotment and gardens. Unfortunately, the uh, phone line isn't going to be working today, I'm afraid. I've had a slight problem with that. Uh, but if you do want to appear on the show today, then please do. Let me just copy the uh, control C, copy that. Then please do zap yourself in on the comments or set yourself in on the link that's going up in the comments right now. So what have I been up to over this last week? And please do let me know what you've been up to yourself. I am, um, oh well, my chickens have started laying eggs again, which is great because uh, we've been missing our fresh homegrown eggs, if that's the right word, our own eggs from our chickens. But they've started laying again this week, so that's great because that means we've got those proper eggs again. Don't half miss them when they're not around. We are going to be getting some new chickens later on this year, so they'll see us through this next winter. What else have I been doing? Yeah, well, yesterday I've set up my grow lights and my growing station. Now, last year, as you probably recall, I had them all in, in this shed, and uh, it worked quite nicely just over there. The only trouble I found was that... Um, when I was doing these live shows, the, the, the actual light from the grow lights was affecting the camera, and I couldn't quite get the look just right. So I've now moved my shed, my grow light station, into my office, where I'm going to be starting off many of my seeds and growing seeds in there. And then today I've been having more sort out in this shed. I've... Um, I've been finding things that I don't need and trying to organise things that I want to use up first. So, for example, let me just find things that I've, I've discovered. So, obviously, we've got this bag of seaweed meal that we found that we bought last week. What else have I got? Multi-purpose grass lawn seed. Don't know why I need that. I think I brought that for a small area where the chicken's demolished, but um, not, not, not really in need for that. Uh, we found that last week, the potato fertilizer. And what else have we got here? This, I haven't got a clue what it is. Let me bring the overhead camera up. Oh, I've moved the camera around. So this, I don't know if it's potato fertilizer. I think it might be, or it's some sort of fertilizer anyway. I think I would have put a label on top of it, but the label's rubbed away. So I've got to try and figure that out. 
and see what that is. But basically, I'm in this mood this year that I just want to get rid of stuff and use as much up uh, as soon as I can so that I'm not having it sitting around next year. I found, what was it, these things actually, that's what I was going with this. These things. I've had these for years. Keep saying I'm going to use them. Do I ever use them? No, I don't. So that's my, my main thing this year is I'm trying to make everything so I can get to it nice and easy. So what about you? What have you been up to in your own allotments and your own gardens? Let's have a quick look at what everybody is saying. Uh, Oracle is saying, I'm not in the same league as Ballycillian. I'm not sure what that is. Tybo Screen, the sky is certainly on topic tonight, leaking like a sieve. Oh, yes, the sky is leaking like a sieve. Certainly get that, you know, Jake. Um, Kate Spratt, I've been doing more prep in my new allotment plot. Got some well watered manure and beds laid out. Got so much more to do, but weather pitted against me. Got your seeds too, yes. The delay with the seeds, that's so annoying, but I've um, had a word with Royal Mail to figure out a way that hopefully should guarantee you get them a lot better. There has been trouble with. Uh, 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 sickness, shall we say. So, fingers crossed that's not going to happen anymore. But yes, um, I think the weather has been a bit of a problem because I wanted to go down the allotment this morning. I wanted to originally go yesterday, but I had a few things to do and didn't go down there. So I was going to go down first thing this morning and then I got a phone call from my mum who wanted to come round and be annoying. So I had to spend some time with her. So I didn't get to the allotment. And with this weather anyway, I don't think the allotment was really the right place to go to. Uh, Rebecca, I've had a week and a half. My growing station collapsed. Oh, no. Oh, no. Growing station collapsed. How awful. Chili seedlings, pepper seedlings all over the floor and completely ruined. Rebecca, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry to hear that. That is, um, that is tricky indeed. Just sprinkle and hope for the best. I think you're talking about that that pack of unknown stuff that we have. I think that's what we're going to do. Sprinkle and hope for the best. Uh, Toby Stream has sold a few things this week. Radish, spring onion and lettuce from a free packet on the sharing bench at the allotment. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Ernie, wet blustery evening to you, Richard. Looking forward to this evening's show. Good evening to you too, Ernie. Uh, planting, Toby has been planting leeks, loofah and onion sets right on target of what we're going to be discussing later on. Ballycillian, Rebecca, disaster after your hard work. I know that is awful. Uh, Rebecca's seeds arrived. Excellent. Plenty of digging to and potting up new climber supports. Um, yeah. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> Toby seems to have done a hell of a lot of work compared to the rest of us this week. Uh, Excellent. And the turbo stream has got his leaks from a supporters club at the ready for the sower long, long leak later. Indeed. And Graham Arnold's fitted a new polytunnel cover on Friday afternoon. It was 26 degrees centigrade inside it yesterday. Oh, that's almost tropical weather inside. I think that just goes to show how good a, uh, a, a, um, a polytunnel really is. Um, so, yes. So, Keep to keep letting us know what you've been up to in the comments. Like I say, if you want to zap in, unfortunately, I say the phone isn't working. Now, on that note of what people have been up to, I think Bally Cillian is very kindly. No, is this Bally Cillian? Yes. I always get the two confused. So apologies if I've got, it, got the names mixed up. Uh, but we've got this video that's came in from one allotment. Hello, Richard. We're going to sow leeks today. I think we should say a wee thing about the leeks just before we start sowing. When you go to your supermarkets and you see these leeks, they're all sitting perfect, all identical, fantastic. even the seed packet, they're all sitting beautiful, identical, not a blemish on them, nothing. I'm not going to be able to grow leeks like that. They're growing in a controlled environment, spread for every disease under the sun. It's not going to happen here. So this is the way I would grow leeks. Fishmonger, give you these Palestine trays for nothing, just ask, any fishmonger local. Seed sown compost and moist, watered it there just before we come on. I want the seeds to be in contact with moisture. Now we get the seeds. I put it careful here because it only is 50 in the packet. I usually scatter every shape, but because I've only got 50 in this packet, I have to be a wee bit more careful. Just gently sow them. 
a couple of lamps of guard doesn't matter. You just trying to get them as a first size box, so get them as much room as you can. A few more. Very small seeds, but you can control them. That's that. 50 seeds, 50 seeds sown. Sieved compost. Here's my sieved compost I keep here. We just give them a wee light covering. Just a covering. Nothing exact. A wee bit here in the corner. Gently pod down just to take any air, air pockets that you've left behind. Right, that's that. Now just need a wee gentle watering tap because the compost below, as I say, was well watered before we started. let that water settle we hurt. Now if we're a wee bit later in the season where the temperatures are better that would be it but we're still getting our hard for us here tonight. So just the germination in our one of these here and just set it on top. That'll stay on until the germination happens just gives them a wee bit more heat. And basically that's my leak zone. Fantastic. So that starts off the leak sowing. So let's quickly have a look at what we uh, everyone is saying, first of all. So Turbo Stream is um, giving Rebecca a sad face. You know, losing the entire sewing station. Good thing is it's early on in the season, so at least it has a good chance that you can catch up on seeds. If that's any consolation for you, Rebecca. Uh, question is for me, for you, Rebecca, however... How did you lose them? Was it one of those green, the um, almost like a poles that clicked together in a like a mini greenhouse or grow house that was outside? Was that what collapsed? Uh, please do let us know. Oh, great guess. I've sowed three types of peppers plus pre germinating peas, raw beans, and sweet peas. I know mainly later than I should have. Hey, well. Beans, beans, ball beans, everything's good to go at the moment, isn't it? And peppers, you know, I'm going to be sowing a lot more seeds a little bit later on just to uh, get things used up as well. Valencian, I got a break in the rain today and got to the pond area cleaned up. Fantastic. Fantastic. Always good. Uh, there was tears from Rebecca, tell, let me tell you. But I've sown again and hopefully you all will catch up. I know it's gutting when that happens. Absolutely gutting. Turbo stream on the plot. I've moved a couple of gooseberries into the new soft fruit area. I've got some pictures coming up of that a little bit later on, actually. Uh, Idaho Garden Girl, hello. I made it with the first for 15 minutes. Hello, Idaho. Hope you are well. Uh, what about Stuart Jackson? Did he take my pet advice on the pear tree and sort it? I haven't seen Stuart Jackson yet. Hope he's all right. Um, for his newfound fame has probably got to him. Who knows? I'm only joking, Stuart, if you're listening. Alison Whelan. Hello, everyone. I've planted some onion seeds, spring onions, and cauliflower this week. Window seals are filling up nicely. Aren't they all? Uh, Adrian has joined. Good evening to you. Uh, Toby Stream says, nice video, uh, belly Cillian. And Rebecca. Yes, it was a mini greenhouse shelves in the house. The biggest bang, then disaster. Oh. I'm surprised at that being inside the house. I've got to admit, those mini greenhouses, I think many people have heard me say before, I'm not a fan of them. I've had several over the years, and they do collapse on the slightest bit of wind and they wind and they blow over, even though I've put weights on the bottom. So I'm not a fan of them, but inside the house, I thought I would have thought they would be okay. Have you got cats or something? What, what I wonder what caused it to go. Just 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 thinking out loud. Um, okay, so that's caught up on their comments. Now, what I am going to be doing today, as we said, oh, let me get rid of that comment, sorry, is we've got a leak sew-along. 
Uh, these are what I'm going to be sewing. I've just realised it's a bit dark. Let me see if I can get on the overhead. Might be better. There we go. These I got from CD Sunday last week. I will be sewing more after this show as well in exactly the same way uh, for my supporters club. Um, so, what do we need first of all? Obviously, we need the seeds, a label, which I've already prepared, a pencil. I use I always use a pencil on my labels because it doesn't wash off, it doesn't fade, and it's easy to remove. That's another little tip for me there. And, oh, excuse the squeaking noise. I have got this polystyrene box. Unfortunately, I've adjusted the camera and haven't moved this over. But this polystyrene box, which I filled up with multi-purpose compost. And I just want to add a bit of a... Um, break down some of large bits in this. This is about six inches from the bottom, filled with multi-purpose compost. So these polystyrene boxes are easy to get hold of. You can get from fish shops or schools or whatever. It's usually what uh, fish is delivered in to many restaurants. So they're easy to get hold of. Um, and I find them, what I find with these polystyrene boxes, especially for leaks, they hold the heat nice enough that they they will last quite a while. So that's got a lot of these large bits all broken up quite nicely now, I think. Just check. So that's nice and nice and fluff. Nice and fluffy. We'll come back to that. I'll come back to that in just a second, but because I've still seen a comment that I want to quickly bring across. This is for Kate. For Rebecca, from Kate, for Rebecca, have you got enough seeds to replace what you lost in the incident? I can send some if you want any more. It's very kind of you, Kate. Um, see what Rebecca says about that. On that note, if you are in the Veg Grower Podcast Facebook group, please do go sign up because there are people talking about swapping seeds in there, and I'm happy for that to go ahead as long as you all take responsibility for for your own actions. But if anybody does want to swap seeds, then please feel free in the Facebook group. We do have a forum on the website, but to be honest, it gets used so little that uh, I don't even really look in there. So uh, that is another option, of course. Uh, Rebecca, I'm not a fan anymore. I only had it because my hus hubby said no more window seal. It was probably my fault I overloaded it. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, that they, they, they don't take it. A huge amount of weight sometimes those things um like i said i'm not a fan of them i now have got a shelf system which you'll see or you hear about on the podcast but i'm also hoping to get a video out this week where you will see it up in my office of my seed sowing station or seed growing station um which is a bit more solid for that very reason. It is an awful thing when it happens. I, I, I share your pain. Um, uh, Rebecca does say, it's so kind, Kate. Thank you so much. Luckily, I didn't sew the whole packet, so I've got plenty more indeed. And Beatrice is joined. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. So back to my container for growing leeks in. So as I say, we've got all this nice and fluffy and it looking nice and soft what i want to do is just add some perlite which i know i've got in here let me just switch over to this camera i've got this in this container here is the perlite i need what do i need that'll do the job that'll do the job nicely so don't have to use perlite. Let's bring the overhead camera on. Just using a dust dustbin brush or dustbin to do it. Um, yeah, this is perlite. It's it's quite a light, nice material. You don't have to use perlite, but I just find it does help. Um, what it does is it it acts as like a sponge to hold on to water for a bit longer, and also acts as a way to aerate the soil. So I just mix that in quite nicely. I'm actually having to stand up to do this, believe it or not. I'm not sitting down tonight. That's why I could do extra cameras for standing up. There we go. 
So that's mixed in quite nicely. I'm just going to try and level it out a bit more. It's nice and level, just shake it and then drop it from the top. There we go. And now what I want to do next, in a drawer that doesn't open, I've got this little wooden thing. That I'm just going to, again, just firm down this compost just slightly so that it's a bit better. There we go. That's ready to go. Spraying a bit of water. Just to give it a good bit of soaking, good soaking, he says, if you can get it right. There we go, that should get it going nicely. Right, now I'm going to put that to one side for a few minutes, just to let that water sink into the compost. I don't worry too much about adding the water because that compost is actually quite quite moist. I added water to it last night when I set the box up. And so you always try and do when I'm sowing seeds is set everything up the night before, set my pots up with compost, add plenty of water and get it ready to go. Uh, so in the comments then, uh, Beatrice is saying, hi, Adrian, hope you and your wife, excuse me, are okay Yes, I hope your wife is okay still, uh, Adrian. I know you said it was angina, and uh, hopefully she's got the treatment she requires for that. Uh, I think, yeah, that's the latest in the comments that I've got. So, yes, I'm just going to give that a few more minutes to, to get underway. We've got another video. Um, no, actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll have a look at the photos first, because I've got another video that's came in from uh, from um, Digwell, and you can imagine what it is, it's cooking again, so uh, people get hungry, but we'll do that a little bit later on. First of all, let's have a look at what photos we've received um, over this last week. So Digwell has sown his leeks on the 9th of January in pretty much a similar way to what we're talking about tonight, using this polystyrene box, and he's got three different varieties in there. Autumn Giant 2, Autumn Mammoth, and Musselberg. As you can see, so in the 9th of January in a cold greenhouse, and they've started to germinate. Uh, Turbo Stream said earlier he was uh, trying to move some of his gooseberries, and here we have some pictures from it. Um, as you can see, there, that's the area, that's the gooseberries, and that's what it looked like in the end, I believe. Anyway, I could be wrong with that. Uh, what have we got next? Uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Ticehurst, he's been spending a lot more time in his garden and allotment lately with the lighter evenings, and I think this is a clipping. It looks like an overwinter chilli, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that is a chilli that he's overwintered. This is his back garden growing space, back garden allotment, back garden kitchen garden. I've been there, visited it before. It looks like it's growing in, in taking over more and more of the garden, which is great to see. I've got to say, it does look like it's ready for this growing season already. And down on the allotment is purple sprouting broccoli, which is looking absolutely stunning. I've got to say, purple sprouting broccoli is in the ground for a very long time, but it is so worth it. Uh, finally, Ian Beddoe's humour. He's been out there planting corks from his wine bottles on the hope that he's going to be able to grow wine. Easier way to do it than that, more reliable, is to grow grapes and then convert them into wine. And finally, uh, for also from it, Ian, a comic strip of what looks like a doctor, but he takes his transplanting his flowers and vegetables very serious by dressing up ready to go. Mm -hmm. So please do keep sharing your photos to the group. You can post them in our Facebook group or you can 
uh, send them to me via email, Richard at the Veg Grower Podcast. Talking about the Facebook group, somebody out there is in the Facebook group. Unfortunately, I can't always see what is going on. So, uh, or who you are, just the way Facebook works sometimes. So, please do. Let me know who you are by at the end. Uh, lots of other nice stuff happening in their greenhouse at the moment, including raw beans and leeks. I only have a small corner in my garden, so don't grow loads of everything. Every little bit helps, is what I've got to say. Every little space helps. Uh, what have we got here? Um, where are we? Uh, Thomas Stream, I sowed a small amount of my leeks in a three centimeter pot, covered with vermicula, as I found some in the shed. And gets it used up indeed. Uh, and he will do another sewing in April. Uh, Idaho, why does everyone use a polystyrene box? So that's a very good question, actually. Uh, I use a polystyrene box because it just helps retain some of the heat a little bit better. Uh, I just found it, it just helps with things like leaks that we can still sew outside when it's a little bit cooler. Leaks are incredibly hardy, but it just helps get them off to a good start, I find. Uh, Adrian, my wife's still in pain and having attacks using lots of GTN spray. A little better since some of the drugs have changed. Pleased to hear that uh, that it's helped. Uh, Turbo Stream says that his last pickles where they were moved from. Uh, indeed, indeed. Um, and... I dig well. Long roots, warm box holds water as to why we use polystyrene. Yeah, let, hold plenty of water, long long enough that it can grow down with long roots. I just think they are perfect for that sort of thing. I don't think polystyrene boxes should only just be used for growing leeks. That's all I, I seem to use them for, but a huge range of things. Anyway, do you think that has had time now for the water to soak? Let's have a quick look over the top. I think that is ready to go. So I, I've written out the label already, and I always stick the label in beforehand. Some of you will know I've got a spreadsheet based on what Muddy Boots and a few other YouTubers were doing, um, where I am keeping a track of my seeds, which I've got to admit is making it a little bit easier to remember what I'm doing, provided I remember to fill it in as and when I sow seeds. Uh, just get all these seeds out of this, this packet. I think. Luckily, that's all the seeds I've got in this packet. So not a huge amount. They look quite similar to onion seeds. Well, they are from the same family. So I'm going to sprinkle these over the top and try and get them evenly spaced, which is easier said than done because I can't even see these seeds when they're sprinkled over. I uh, can't see them now, they're in the ground. Now what I want to do now, just bring this along again, tab them down again, just to make sure the seeds are in good contact with the soil. Again, that just helps promote them, promote the germination. There we go, that's the seeds ready to go. The final thing we need, I come over to here, and I can get get my chip pad and sprinkle over a bit more. This is seed compost I'm using on the top, just because it's a bit lighter to use. I've added power light to it already, as you can see. Bit more. So once, doesn't need a huge amount of depth to the covering, but just now. There we go. There we go. There we go. That is the leek seeds. <coughs> so I'm just going to tamp them down once more just to make sure. And then put these to one side. Now, what I will do with that box, I'm going to put a bit, piece of. Uh, clear plastic over the top. Uh, this is just a bit of scrap plastic. Again, don't have to do that, but it just helps. Then I'll place that in my greenhouse. Again, if you haven't got a greenhouse, anywhere that might protect it, cold frame or even just outside with a, 
with the plastic over the top will be fine. Leaks are incredibly hardy. The biggest trouble with getting them germinated, if you're outside, is with birds. And they might come along and eat the seeds. So there we go. They are sown. And they will stay in that greenhouse until they are ready to go outside. They won't need any more work, to be honest. They won't need thinning out or anything while they're in there until they are ready to go outside. But we'll come on to that in just a minute. Um, let's have a look at what everyone else is saying. Uh, Terms of all my seeds are in a plastic box in my spare room under my grow lights. Indeed, yes, grow lights are a big thing to use at the moment. I think more and more people have, have learned just how good grow lights are. Um, I'm certainly hearing and seeing a lot more people using them anyway, I think, anyway. Um, God, that went strong. So 1980s, using labels right on the box using with a PNA 125 pen. Yes, you keep mentioning this pen, and I keep saying I'm going to look at it, and I never find it. But to be honest... My labels and my pencils, they've done me well since the 1980s. So if it works, it works. Um, but, uh, yeah. Toby, plant, planting more links tomorrow. The seeds that arrived from TVGP supporters club, indeed. Uh, Turbo Stream, last year after the link seeds germinated, I planted them in a clump to thicken up before planting them in their final positions. That's not a bad idea, but... We'll come into that in a minute. I do a load as multi sown sea cells too. Nice small leaks to cook whole. Uh, Ian Bellows, sown the cauliflower and sprouts in the greenhouse, giving them no more than six weeks before we sow the cauliflower and sprouts in the greenhouse, giving them no more than six weeks before we leave to get them in the outdoor beds. Yeah, if, they, if they, they're warm, you might just be able to do that. It's going to be hard and Digwell's going to send me one of those pens that's very very kind of you so moving on with this leak grow along I've got leaks down on the allotment they will be in the ground for quite a long time so that's why they tend to stay in this polystyrene box until I'm ready for them to go outside and I'm usually looking for them to be about the thickness of a pencil when I I get them outside so about as thick as that where I usually, or where I like to plant my leeks, is where my first early potatoes are currently growing. So I would dig out my first early potatoes and follow them up with leeks. That way the ground gets used more than once throughout the season, and it goes on with the what's of a consecutive growing. Uh, that's how I like to do it. I would like to wait, like I say, they're a thickness of a pencil, and then what I'll do... Um, clear out all the potatoes, make sure there's none in the soil. Then I take a dibber, which is basically an old handle from a shovel, dig a dip in a hole, take a single leak, and then drop it into the hole. Some people like to trim up the roots and the tops. I don't. I just drop it straight in as it, it is. Continue that all along until all my leaks are planted out, and then I'll go along and water it. You don't have to backfill the holes. The uh, water will do it for you, and it will end up that you have some really nice blanched leeks. In the soil, like I say, they're still in the ground now, believe it or not, and they're still good. They probably will start bolting soon, but at the moment, the leeks are still good. So they will be in the ground for a long time, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, that being said, they are so hardy. They are so useful throughout the winter, and all they need is to make sure they're watered quite regularly and kept moist, and the odd handful of chicken manure pellets goes a long way to help them. That's what I find. But if anybody else has any tips on growing links, then please do let us know. Turbo stream. I suppose my three centimetre pot is a big multi-sown um, multi cell. Yeah, I guess it is. That's one way of looking at it. Uh, Money boots. Edit 750 markers for me. Whatever works. Whatever works. I've I, I, I see lots of people asking for good markers and pens on what they can put on their labels. And I've always said for me, the easiest thing for me is just a pencil. It doesn't rub off unless you, you rub it off. It doesn't get washed off in the rain. It doesn't get bleached in the sun. Pencil just works for me. Um, 
and uh, digwell says if you wanted you could just rip them into small chunks when you come to plant out talking about these multi-sown leeks so there we have it leeks are now sown and ready to go it's all just a waiting game at the moment now i did promise that i was going to share some of our photos of my aubergines and the chilies that we've done in the last couple of uh grow alongs but um i'll be honest I completely forgot to take the photos. It wasn't until literally just a second that I've remembered. So I will make sure I take photos of the aubergines and the chilies on next week's show so I can show them to you and show how they're getting on. Uh, pencil and chocolate lolly sticks. That's my youngest loves for me. Yeah, I, I've heard of lolly sticks. I've tried using them. I just found they, they seem to go mouldy after a while. So... I don't don't like it. I just find the plastic, the white plastic. I use them year on year. I've got a collection of them. Um, but again, like I say, everybody has different things that they like to use, and this is what it's all about: sharing that knowledge and sharing what everybody uses. Uh, as Digwell says, pencils are good, but I still lose the labels. Yeah, I can see why that's a problem. Um, that's why I stick. To, that's why I. I'm very, very, very fastidious at putting the label in before I sew. And then when I go down on the allotment, I can either make bigger labels. I was actually walking down my allotments the other night, and as we were wandering around taking Moxie for a walk, I noticed somebody down there had these little uh, hangers. They made little labels up that hang. On to, I have to get a photo of it because I was quite impressed with it until I sort of thought about it and realised a lot of information you can't get in there. Uh, Thomas Stream, I am in the pencil and plant label camp too. And Rebecca, I've just ordered some metal labels, hoping they're good. Don't want to use plastic anymore. Yes, I know plastic is a bit of a dirty word at the moment, but here's my take on it. If plastic's fine if it's reused. If plastic is a good material, if it wasn't, we wouldn't be using it. But as a material that we can use time and time again, I think it's fine. And that's why, I mean, this label that I've used here for that, it's a little bit on the grubby side, but I suspect that's probably, I don't know, three, four, five, six years old, something like that. Uh, Hargrave guess any tips on getting marker pens off old labels? Some just fade, but others stay on forever. That's a good, good question. I don't know of any. We'll throw that out there and see what anybody else has. Anna Jones says freezer tape and biro for me. Never thought of that. Freezer tape, um, of course, Fed Go podcast for all the same. It would be a boring world. Imagine 20 million dig. Oh, don't. That's, that's going to be our nightmare, 20 million dig wells. <laughs> Just joking, of course, buddy. Uh, yellow electrical tape for me as colorblind. I've got a bit, yes. Electrical tape I found worked quite nicely as well. Um, whatever whatever color you use, I put that on pots, and that did actually work very, very, very well. I use slate with acrylic paint pen. That's a good idea. Work to treat. I'll send photos. Please do. Never thought of that. Um, I know where my father lives. My father-in-law, sorry. They've got slate just lying around. It's naturally found there. So next time I'm up there, I might go and grab some slate to cut into uh, these little... to make um, these little markers. I like that idea. I use IPA or MEFs to get rid of markers, that is, IPA or MEFs. Uh, Rebecca says nail varnish, good one. Uh, Toby says nail polish remover takes inks off labels. Uh, works wonders. Nail varnish apparently works wonders. Nail varnish or nail varnish remover, my question to you, Rebecca. Uh, Mess or white spirits to clean the labels. Uh, I cleaned some old labels this week using white magic, magic erasure from a pound shop. It worked really, really worked on mark pens too. Actually, that's a, a very good point because that's what I use to clean my labels as well. Those magic erasers—they get rid of the pencils. 
Uh, I've never tried them on marker pens, so I'll take Turbo Stream on that. Quite cheap, quite cheap to do uh, and easy to get hold of. Nail varnish remover cleans permanent markers off labels from Anne Wright. And Rebecca says nail polish remover and acetone to remove ink on labels. Isn't acetone the same stuff that is used in nail polish remover? Um, I, I, I'm only uh, guessing there. I don't use the stuff. I just smell it every now and then and it smells like acetone. Yellow, I thought you were using green uh, to that. Robert Browsford, de-iser spray removes marker pens. De-iser spray, that's interesting. Never heard of that one. Uh, no, it just looks green. Uh, I need more nail varnish remover. Yeah, I think I need more of it then. And I scrub mine with a rough scrubber punt with warm water and dishwashing li liquid. I've also used ethyl acetate, which I think is similar to uh, nail polish remover as well. But yeah, rough scrap and pad, uh, warm water, dishwashing liquid, uh, magic erasers, nail varnish remover. Uh, I cut a chunk off the white sponge and wet the labels. It works a treat. We're using those magic erasers. Yeah, again, I love those magic erasers. That I found them great in a whole range of things in the garden and on the allotment. Especially, like I say, those labels, and especially some older labels. So, who's ready to get hungry? Because I think it's time we showed off. Um, Digwell's very kindly made another video for us. You know, After the effort he put in last week, I was absolutely um, so pleased to see another video from him. So, uh, let's get this one underway. A nice simple one for you today, leek, onion and potato soup. So simple this one. Um, leeks, two leeks, leek stocky from the allotment, vegetable stock, a medium potato, 20 or 30 grams of butter, red onion and about 150 ml of milk. Finally slice your leeks. I find it easier to cut them in half first. Smash your garlic, take the skin off, leave it whole, it's going to get blitz anyway. Um, red barren onion, this one. Take the skin off and finely slice it. Peel your potato. Sadly, this isn't one of my own. Cut the bottom off, make it nice and stable on the board. Slice it that way, then cut it into one centimetre chunks. Knob of butter in the pan. Get it sizzling. And in with the veg. Stir the veg quickly to get everything coated with butter. On with the lid and sweat the veg down for about 15 minutes. In with the vegetable stock and the milk. You can use single cream if you like, a little bit richer. Bring it up to a simmer and simmer for 20 minutes. Lid on. And here we are, soup done. Now, the decision is yours. Chunky soup, pureed soup, or a bit in between. It's up to you. I pureed mine because I was going to put a load in the freezer for later. A sprinkling of parsley or coriander. Job done, here we go then. <clears throat> oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just that little hint of garlic coming through, not overpowering. Hmm, that's good. He always does it, doesn't he? He makes us so hungry with his little videos. Thank you so much for that, Digwell. I'm going to be making that very recipe very, very soon. Only thing I would probably do differently is that I tend to use my own homemade stock. And if anybody out there is into their cooking, making your own stock is far better than anything you can buy. And what I tend to do with uh, vegetable stock I use all my potato peelings, the tops of carrots, all that waste stuff, all the waste vegetable items, 
and I'll just simmer that in some water for quite a long time to make my vegetable stock, and that stays in the freezer. Just my little uh, little tip, my little tip. I'll have to do a video on how I do that one day. A um, lot of love coming in about that. So uh, Hargrave saying some great tips about getting the permanent marker off his labels. So you're very welcome. Uh, Mildred's elbow grease does it for me. Toby is posting pictures of the slate labels in the Facebook page. Fantastic. Uh, Toby Stream, congratulate you on your newsletter as an ex digital printer. I appreciate that it had my name on it. That's not a problem. Oracle, is Digwell a chef? This is something I've often wondered myself because his knife skills and his, his cooking skills are phenomenal. So we'll find out. I'm sure he's going to let us know. Rebecca says he loves, she loves these videos. Lost a couple of hours watching them the other day. Uh, I'm not sure, but he should be. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Well, we know who he is on the barbecue. Yeah, he's off again. <laughs> oh, yum. Hey, you might, I told you, what did you do? Make everyone hungry. I do love Digwell's videos. Oh, indeed. We now... We know who is on the barbecue on the Veg Grower Army party. Yes, yes, that is finalising the details. So bear with on that. Uh, Alison, thank you, Digwell. We, you've made me hungry again. Uh, Digwell, that soup looks a lot nicer than the green sludge I made this afternoon. Uh, did, did see a video of it, Turbo, so we can't comment. Two crusty bread rolls with butter, please. Um, Thanks, Digwell. Looks lovely. Thank you, Digwell. Love the cooking. And Digwell says, oh, no, to Turbo Stream. Indeed. Yeah, I do love those little cooking videos. It makes me very hungry seeing them as well. I'm thinking about it. You'll be on a slightly different note. Um, I, I, I don't know if Digwell is going to appreciate this. But last night, we made some hum, homemade Chinese dumplings and Chinese buns. Um, we were very, very proud of ourselves with that and we're still eating them today to be honest they were delicious uh which is why unfortunately i haven't made any leek recipes i was going to i was going to make a leek and cheese recipe that i quite often make which is basically leek sauteed down just slightly and then some prem fresh and some parmesan and a bit of nutmeg and just cook that into make it's almost like a gratin i guess it is delicious. It goes down really well on a many plates as like a side dish. And quite often when I cook it, there's never any left. Just a little leek recipe that I have with you as the subject tonight is all about leeks. If anybody else has any other ideas for leeks, then please do let us know. On that note, let me just say, unfortunately, as I said earlier, I haven't got the phone working because there's no thing that's it. No battery to it. I forgot to put it on charge. But I have added the link if you want to zap in in the comments right now. Um, just click on the link and you can appear on screen. Uh, Digwell, no, I'm not a chef. No training whatsoever. I just like eating. Uh, yeah, don't we all? Don't we all? Especially after watching your videos, Digwell. You make us all very, very hungry. Uh, I still ate it, Digwell. Just added seasoning to make it taste better. <laughs> and uh, not advertising, but I did a Chinese dumpling video a few weeks ago. That's kind of, in all honesty, what inspired me to make them. When you dig well, watching your Chinese dumpling video, I had to go and make them, and yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, God. I, I, always risky, isn't it? I know this is the Veg Grow podcast, and cooking is always part of growing veg, I feel. Which brings me up next week. I had thought I had an idea for a slightly different subject that we could discuss next week. Um, we didn't have any plans, did we, for next week? No. And I thought drinks that we can make from our homegrown produce. Any ideas? Sharing recipes on that. Don't have to make videos, just get a few ideas. That's what I was thinking. And of course, I might have other ideas of things to talk about as well. Um, I think we've covered the leeks. Has anybody else got any tips on how to grow leeks? Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
as Sean O'Brien has just sort of said, good evening all and LOL, Leek. Yes, with the rain we're having today, Leek does seem very, very uh, appropriate. Leek and mushroom pie, yum, yum. Um, not for me. I'd be chicken and leek pie. I've, I've got an allergy to mushrooms, believe it or not, which is why I don't grow mushrooms. I don't eat mushrooms. It's a shame because I wish I could grow mushrooms and eat them because there's so many things we could do with them. But uh, God and I, I just thought, uh, just a thought. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. I've never made any drinks. There we go. I've got a few ideas off the top of my head. We've got my elderflower cordial, delicious cider. Uh, Margaret saying, yay, drinks from veg, moonshine. Indeed, indeed, yeah. Uh, elderflower cordial, cider, uh, rhubarb cordial. Quite a few ideas that I've got off the top of my head. I want to see if anybody else has any ideas as well. See, that's not until next Sunday. Now, uh, it is coming into that time of year. Oh, actually, let me just remind, remind everyone. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click the notifications to get notified every time we go live. Got to say that every week. I know I hate it. I feel it's very boring and very... Um, Repetitive saying it, but if I don't say it, I get told off. Our Oracle said that Vobes, Richard Vobes, the board explorer, done well growing the mushrooms. He did. He's done very well growing those. I haven't dared enter his house because of my <laughs> the risk of me um, of my allergy. So disgusting. It, <laughs> it, it's a horrible allergy to have for mushrooms. You'd be surprised. How often it comes in. Corn. I don't know if anybody knows. Corn is made from fungi and that sets me off. Leeks are very robust veg to grow. If they get too big in the poly box, just then then just trim the tops or the roots of both at planting time. Yes, they are. That was something I did say earlier about trimming the tops um, and drops and roots when you go to plant them. A lot of people do do that. They say it shocks them into action. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't bother. I just plonk them straight in. Because, sorry, I'm having trouble with my words now because the internet is pretty poor and I keep getting all these alarms come up that, that throws me out of sync. Uh, potatoes, poteen. I've never heard of that. What's that? Poteen. Save that for next week, money boots. That's a good idea if that is a drink. Talking of potatoes, as you know, my, last week we discussed shit or not. Let's have a look and see how far they got on to th this week. Bring on the overhead camera because that's better light. Not doing too bad, are they? Not massive, not nice and thick, not looking too bad at all. Nicely, nicely started off. Looking forward to getting my potatoes in the ground. Got to build the beds. Got to build the beds. It's a priority for this next week. Got to go to a garden centre or somewhere and get the wood and just build the beds. Uh, Rebecca says, when do you plant your leeks outside? Good question, actually. Like I say, excuse me, they can go out when they're about the size of a, a, a thick as a pencil. You can sow them outside, of course, in, in sort of March time, maybe a bit later, March, April, May. Uh, but I will probably get mine outside down on the allotment once my first early potatoes are out, which probably for me would be about mid-June. So, yeah, you've got quite a long period in which you can get your leeks outside. I've actually put some leeks in the ground in September, as late as that, and they've done okay in the past. So, yeah, lots of ideas there. Lots of times in, out there. See if anybody else, when they pop theirs out. Uh, poteen Irish Vodka. Uh, so that's what it is. I didn't know that. I did not know Poteen. I've never heard of it before. So uh, I, I've learned something here. Um, but please do get your recipe in for that. That'd be an interesting one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
just checking on those comments. Like I say, signal is awful tonight, I've got to say. I don't know what's going on, but we're having so many problems, technical problems, and they keep going in and out. Um, Term strip, still haven't bought any sea potatoes yet. Still undecided about growing them this year. I think you've got to make your decision up quite soon. I've noticed there's definitely not as many sea potatoes on sale as there has been in the past. And what is out there is being sold quite quickly. So I don't don't understand why I thought last year was a good year for potatoes. Saying that blight was a big problem. So that might be why people are struggling. I haven't came across any of my Sarpo varieties either yet, which is a shame. Uh, Leek. Rebecca has never grown the leeks before, so go to give them a go. There you go. I hope you sow yours tonight along with this grow along. Um, and please do keep sharing them throughout this next year as we see how they get on. Um, not, gonna, not sure what we're going to do with the next grow along in March, but once a month we'll have a, a weekly grow along and we'll try and recap on all of the seeds and some things that we've grown throughout the year. Uh, I bought some blue salad potatoes for the first time. I do like, what was it, the red ones? The, oh, well, purple potatoes. I grew a couple of years ago. What were they called? I can't, blue Danube or something. They were they were purple. I remember they were purple. And we used them on Christmas Day, actually. And they looked absolutely stunning. We mixed them in with our normal white potatoes and just roasted them. And you had this purple and white, it beautiful, tasted delicious, but just the look of the purple or the blue potatoes was just worth it. My leeks bolted last year from April sown seeds. So that does happen, actually. Sometimes I get the odd leek that does bolt. I just remove it and use it straight away. Generally speaking, leeks will bolt because they've either got lack of water or they've got too hot. So as long as you keep up with the water and keep it moist, they should be okay. I managed to find some international kidney spuds, happy as it was a failed crop. Yeah, yeah, there has been a lot of trouble with uh, sea potatoes this year. Um, it just so happens that uh, last year was a, a tricky year for potato growers, from what I understand. I had a really good year for potatoes, so I, I don't understand it myself. Uh, Digwell says, Blue Danube, that's what I thought. Not sure what I did wrong for the leaks. Blue Danube from Money Boots and Bally Seal, Blue Danube. That's what I think they were, the Blue Danube, but I'm not sure. I think they were they had violet in the name. I've had blue to do, which were probably what um, Cornish Chevron has brought the blue to do, but could be could be wrong. But the purple ones that I had, I'm sure they had violet in the name, and I can't remember what they were called. They were delicious though. But I, I, I is it purple? Purple majestic might have been, might have been. I can't remember. I cannot remember. They would, they would, they would just look gorgeous. I've got to say, just how they look. You know, you know how roasted potatoes look. They all look kind of the same. But you mixed in with these purple potatoes, just did look stunning. Um, I haven't been able to find them since. I maybe did water enough. Then we had a week of thirty degrees C in June. Yeah, I think that was the problem. Not enough water. It's something, it takes a bit of skill, isn't it? Learning how much water to add, and how, how often and how much water. That's going to be a subject that we're going to discuss, actually, for water. Um, let me, I've got to remember, ah, just remember saying else. Water. Sometimes I get an idea and I've got to make a note of it right away. So the calendar as well, there's something we've been doing this year. The calendar and what it suggests uh, for this this growing season last week was to complete the pruning of established trees and shrubs as early as possible before bud burst and mulch liberally with organic matter did everybody manage to finish off their fruit pruning this week so what does it suggest for this coming week bring it up and bring it around late february is the ideal time to cut back overgrown hedges before they start producing new growth during the spring 
Thin, straggly hedges of hawthorn and privet will benefit from hard pruning now. Be brave. Fresh new shoots will soon be hide the bare branches and give your hedges a new lease of life. That's pretty much the same as what it said last week, isn't it? Pretty much the same as what it said last week. Trimming, uh, trimming back. But saying that, my hedges out front could do with a nice hard prune. Um, I'll give a advice privet bushes at some point. Uh, if they bolt, then cut the scapes off and eat them sautéed in butter. And when you pick the leek, just cut the leek in half and remove the hard core. There you go. That's the tip if your leeks do bolt. They're still edible. You just get a hard core in the centre, which is inedible. But cut them, up, cut them off, cut the scapes off, and off you go. My buckets and some troughs of DPM plastic worked well cheap homemade tray please do send us a photo of that love to see how that has worked um purple majesty that was the one yes it was purple majesty yes delicious absolutely delicious good looking potato right the leak so along went over quicker than what i thought it was going to go in all honesty a bit of a a tricky one so i've run out i haven't really looked into any subjects i can discuss tonight instead um anything anybody else got anything they want to add or anything they want to discuss most bolted dig well i left them to run to seed even that didn't work oh well fingers crossed this year i think it's just lack of watering i've spent i spent a lot of time trying to figure out just how much water and how much how often to water but in it it's a tricky one to get right. I finished my fruit, just got to do my buddliers now. Buddliers, I'm buddliers. I've got a buddlier out there. No matter how much we seem to cut it back, it just seems to grow back and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Don't even think it was there when we moved in. It just seems to have taken over this buddlier. It just appeared and taken over. We've got to try and get rid of it at some point. And of course, being a buddlier, we get all the little other baby plants. It sets seeds everywhere in places that we don't want it, um, including on the front drive. It literally found a crack, and it's the strongest plant I've ever known to grow in a crack. And trying to get rid of it is a nightmare. But that's buddy is for you, isn't it? There's always going to be some roots. God, that wind is getting stronger and stronger. Uh, Hope it. Hope everyone's allotments and greenhouses have been safe this weekend with all the uh, the strong weather we've had. There've been a lot of problems with that. I know uh, over the last few weeks. I hope mine's out. I'm thinking about it. I hope my greenhouse allotment is greenhouse. Well, that's greenhouse on the allotment is okay. I've been down there to check about it. Uh, Toby. I did a post about a Zoom session I'm doing for new allotment holders. If, oh, yes, I did see this. So Toby has put a post up in the VentiGrow Podcast Facebook group that he's holding a Zoom session for new allotment holders to share some tips. Um, I can't remember when he's when it is off the top of my head. It's a, is it this Tuesday? Um, please do go check it out in the Facebook group if you want to find out more. Um, not sure how many people you can fit in on Zoom, but uh, good, good idea in, indeed. Can I plant out cabbages this week? They're big enough. I was using them for picking leaves. Yeah, I think you'd be okay getting them out. You might have to just um, cut. Might just have to cover them from the strong winds. I think it's meant to rain all week as well. I don't think we're going to have any cold weather, but the rain is meant to be pretty uh, tough this week. Um, yeah, but so I think you'll be okay doing that. I think the worst of the bad weather, the cold weather that is, is over with. Not saying it's going to be frost free, but I don't think we're going to get any really cold weather. I've never been successful with leaks. Maybe it gets too hot here. With all your suggestions, I think we'll try again this year. Yeah, I, I can see it might get too hot in Idaho. So you might want some shade cloth over the top just to keep it a bit cooler as well. I think leeks are incredibly hardy when it comes to growing them over winter. Um, so, so they probably don't like the warm weather indeed. Uh, 
You can prune them hard, Richard. Think of the lovely butterflies. That's the buddliers. Yes, we prune it hard back every year. Trouble is, it, it almost encroaches onto our neighbours. So we do prune it back. I know the butterflies love it, but I set lots of things up for all these birds as well. My garden is meant to be all about edibles. Uh, Tuesday at 8 p.m. for that Zoom session from Toby for new allotments. Uh, go check that out. Um, see what anybody else has to add. Greenhouse, okay. Oh, what did I? Why did I say that? But I have a broken fence post. Upon investigation, it's corroded metal metal post. So not too bad a job. Yeah, I think damage this week is going to be hopefully going to be okay for me. But you never know, do you? You just never know. Just seen the country fall weather forecast. There's another big storm coming in next week and snow in the north. So what I just said is probably a load of rubbish. Uh, another big storm coming in. Is that going to be affecting? What parts of the country is that going to be affecting? That's a good question. AABB, greetings from New York State. Good evening to you. Hope you're well. Uh, I may as well plant them. I need the space in the porch. Yeah, that's a good question, actually. We were discussing a bit about um, growing stations earlier, weren't we? What with Rebecca's one, unfortunately, collapsing. And where does everybody set their, grow their seedlings and their seeds? Excuse me. Where, where do you all grow them? As I said, I like them to be out here in the shed. In the water state. I used to grow them on my window sill in our old house because... We had no other choice, but <laughs> I ruined the windowsill, so I've, I've moved them out onto a shelf, out into here. Um, and I'm just trying different places, but I want to know where you all grow yours. If you've got a conservatory or a porch, how well does it work? Has anyone grown Comanche F1 leeks before? I've always grown mussel bird, but fancied a, a change this year. Not heard of those particular varieties myself, so I've not grown them. So uh, I've always grown mussel burn. They're always quite reliable. These King Richard I'm looking forward to trying. And the other variety I'll be growing is the ones that the Supporters Club got, which are a giant leak. And I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head. Uh, the storm coming in this week is from Scotland down to the Midlands, so we'll be okay here. Super windy here from Kate. I tried to put loads of cardboard down on my beds for my potatoes to cover the manure. It all blew away. Rookie mistake. Got my step cunt out by retrieving them from neighbours' plots. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, I, I tend to hold on to as much cardboard as I possibly can these days. And I don't pull it out until I've got stuff to go on top. I tend to pop the cardboard down and then I'll pop compost on top <laughs> and it doesn't blow away. But, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. It can very easily blow away. My seedlings are on self-facing window sills. Okay, fantastic. I don't have a self-facing window, so which is why I can't do it. Um, window sills mainly for my seed sowing. Uh, are they south facing all my windows are east and west facing so we don't get a huge amount of light is it warm enough in your shed it is warm enough actually i mean i come out here every sunday and i do have a little heater down here obviously but it doesn't it's not too bad in here it does retain heat quite well um and plus i have heated propagators which helps plus with all the lights and everything going on it adds to the heat um God, remember, I've got a very mild climate where I am, so uh, I can get away with a lot more things than most other people because of how mild it is. Uh, Ballycillian just dig well, sister Ballycillian just checked, and it looks like it will be windy here in Gloucestershire. I'd better stake the fence as it's not being fixed until next week. Yeah, I'll be just glad when all this bad weather has passed, to be honest. I've had enough of the rain, really had enough of the rain. I just want to get some nice, hot, sunny summer days coming in. Not too hot, but just enough that I can really get on down on the allotment, down in the garden. I feel like rain is such a lame excuse to not go out. But to be honest, who really wants to go out when it's wet and miserable? Um... 
Looks like it's going to be a bad storm as well to do with a jet stream. I'll look into the weather later. Uh, my seeds are in a plastic box to germinate and then go in a south-facing porch, which gets very hot sometimes. Then they go into my Heath Robinson cold frame. Yeah, I mean, I've got a greenhouse, of course. So, again, I know I'm very lucky to have a greenhouse in mild weather, so I can get my my plants out into the greenhouse probably about march but I had a, last year i had a picture from a one of my supporter members supporting members last black um and it was tomatoes i think i sent tomatoes out around march and by may i think he grew his in the conservatory his tomatoes were reaching the top of his con conservatory and they were huge and that got me thinking that sometimes just a bit too much heat can be counterproductive today was that horrid heavy drizzle rain that soaks you more than normal rain yeah it has been a horrible day i just don't like this weather today um so i know i know people in other areas are probably not appreciating that in the weather this evening or today it probably got better weather in other places Rebecca says, I'm so jealous of your weather down south. It's hard growing up north. If I remember correctly, Rebecca, you're Northampton. I can't, I, I, I can't remember. I can't remember exactly where you are, but I know it, it is harder to grow up north, of course. That being said, there's a lot of people that do it and do it more successfully. I think this because it is so mild here where i am we we don't get snow we very rarely get frosts and i think sometimes that doesn't help i think sometimes we need that period of cold to break down the soil to um get rid of any pests and diseases you know we've still got birds flying around at the moment pigeons and um some wagtails are starting to come in it, <laughs> and i say it's very very mild here Turbo stream. Going to try some direct sowing undercover this year on the plot as an experiment to compare to sowing indoors. Please do let us know how that experiment goes on. I'll be very fascinated to see just how well that does. Something I've often wondered. I remember when I was, how old was I? I was in my 20s, I think, and when I still lived with my parents. I actually sowed, what was it, beans or tomatoes? Maybe one of it or the other. I sowed one in pot and another in, or sowed some in pots and some in directly in the ground to see just how well they got on. And what I found is the, the ones in the pots started showing themselves earlier, but they soon, the ones in the ground soon caught up and it ended up there was no real difference. Uh, Rebecca is not in the share. I thought it was. Uh, there we go. Is Idaho has had zero precipitation for months. This is not good as our water supply is dependent on snow melt from mountains stored in our reservoirs. Oh, that is going to be a bit of a problem. If it's a frost that kills off the pests, we should be totally pest free this year from Ian Bellows in uh, near Manchester, if I remember correctly. Um, well, you still get pests every year. The trouble is, they come, what happens, they come to where I live, they'll hibernate here where it's a bit warmer, and then they'll move back up north. That's my theory anyway. Um, they seem to grow giant veg well up north. Yeah, exactly. This is my point. Um, they seem to grow giant veg very well up north, so it, it can be done. I do know from my two years on my plot now not to sow too soon. Our last frost date is mid-May in Birmingham. Yeah, my frost last frost date is end of April, beginning of May. That's why I don't tend to put anything out till the middle of May. The Eskimos are reputed to have 100 words for snow. We have 100 for rain. Crap, crappy, crapper, etc., etc. <laughs> very very clever there very clever uh, we had a cold january this year frosts for a fortnight in Birmingham. i can't remember when we last had a frost at all uh, oh actually no we had frozen windows on our vehicle yesterday like i say snow very very rare very rare sets frosts very rare 
a bit more often than snow day. Um, but that's partly because we've got to see 10 minutes walk from us, so we get warmed up by that, and it helps control the microclimate of our area. Anyway, so all chatted about the weather. We've got uh, about 15 minutes of this show left. If you want to zap yourself in, then please do. Um, we got more people are commenting. I used to sew outside in the ground for a couple of seasons in a row. Everything grown great. One day went to water and slugs had cleaned me out. That's why I mainly sew indoors now. From Ballycillian. Yeah, this is what um what 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 I what I've wondered quite often is is there a difference between growing indoors and outdoors? Ed, you'll be getting plenty of rain in your plot if you're in Manchester. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's Grim up north, I tell Lee from Turbo Stream. And Alison, we have so much rain in Wales, but very little frost or snow. Indeed, yeah, that's we don't well, we do get quite a bit of rain here, but I, I'm with you, we get very little frost and snow. Uh, love a good frost on the garden, helps break the manure up. It does. It does, and that's what I think we sometimes need. You can tell the difference in the soil when that frost gets into it. It just permeates through and, and makes things look a little bit better. Because um, just looking behind, I've just noticed, you remember last time we did a grow along and one of those lids on the uh, containers just behind me fell down and scared the crap out of me. I just suddenly realised it was still open and I've realised my... Um, Pitchfork is holding it up, which is probably why it hasn't fallen down. Not baking on enough heavy frost to kill the slugs, so I just placed my annual order for never slugs. One delivery a month for eight months. Yes, the um, the factory for nematodes isn't far from where I live, actually. I've got to go and visit them and find out more about this, because I think that's going to be interesting. Um that's a good one, actually. Pest control. That's another thing we've got to discuss at some point, isn't it? How you go about pest control. Um, sometimes these ideas just pop into my head, and I've got to make a note of them and see what we can do. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Don't forget, you can always add your own ideas for your own think topics that we can discuss at any time. Point. You can reach out, and it'd be nice to get a few guests coming once in a while. Now, uh, COVID restrictions are starting to lift. It'd be nice to get a few people to come and join me in the shed, or even you know, we can do the uh, zapping in as well. Um, <laughs> Digwell was willing the pitchfork to move. I hope not, because that would really scare me. Uh, turbo stream. I will direct sow in small covered seabed. It probably won't work, but worth a try. Uh, Margaret is saying, back to the drinks. I was joking about moonshine, and as for potato vodka, pot sheen, it is highly illegal to make. Well, there's, we, we can still discuss it. We can discuss it. it Maybe highly illegal, but uh, we can discuss it. I bought a slag gel detergent, detergent yesterday. Has anyone tried it? Um, not slug, slug gel. I've used slug pellets in the past, and, which I don't use anymore, or I've used woolen pellets, which I actually found some I had left over. Always use never slug in my potato patch. Brilliant stuff. And I haven't had any slug trouble for the last few years. Do have resident hedgehog growth, so probably eat them all up. I'm in the same boat as Graham, actually. I've got hedgehogs, I've got seagulls, I've got chickens, all of which help keep our slug population down and i think the dog is also going to help with that as well uh, with the nematodes it is not always or often cheaper to buy direct yeah i am um, a couple of years ago was it a couple of years ago yeah it was just before um just before covid i was at a uh garden media event that I'll be going in a couple of weeks time come what uh, yeah three weeks time i can't wait to go go and see everything and they had this it was a nematode but instead of watering it in you sort of sprinkle it in little balls and it, it goes into the soil itself i was rather interested with that they said they were going to send me some to try and I, 
I never, I guess in COVID, just changed everything. So I never um, heard it, I heard any more from it. Uh, Graham says uh, he built his hedgehog a house last year. My hedgehogs took up residence inside my greenhouse, believe it or not. I put a, a, a stand for my water butt that I keep in there, and they decided that they were going to live underneath that they burrowed into the greenhouse from the side, um, which I don't mind because it means I don't get any problems with slugs in there. Uh, Digwell says that he finds that the gel needs reapplying quite often, and he goes on to say, Check out Garden Naturally, one pound a box, cheaper plus free delivery. Is that for nematodes? Uh, I know, my chickens refuse to eat slugs. They pick one up and then spend the next five minutes trying to clean the slime off their beaks. Yeah, I've got to admit, my chickens, they prefer snails. And I quite often just hear them crunch a snail. Um, I don't like don't like that in some ways. I'm not a vegan, but I, I know that would upset some vegans. But uh, it's also natural nature for them. Anyone tried shell on earth? It's meant to be very good, but never tried it. I've heard about eggshells. Yeah, pot nose around. I add eggshells to my compost so it gets mixed in. I can see the logic. I know coffee grounds, they were very good for slug deterrent as well uh, because it, it, I really did find it in a thick layer of coffee grounds. That got rid of any slugs as well because they, they couldn't get it off them. Uh, the other good thing about coffee grounds, and this is a little bit geeky, shall we say. So a coffee plant produces caffeine because caffeine is a natural weed suppressor. It stops any other weeds from growing. So they produce caffeine to outcompete other plants. So whilst coffee grounds don't contain a lot of caffeine because you've used it in your coffee, there still might be a bit of caffeine in there. So just if you do use coffee grounds, bear that in mind if you're trying to grow seeds. I think I said in one of my video clips, the frogs living in and around the pond that are made on the plot have really helped with the slug problem. Yeah, I think frogs are very good for slugs and snails as well. Anything like that. I think for me, the biggest advantage or the biggest thing that I've ever done with that sort of thing was encourage slugs and snails in... Uh, not encourage slugs and snails, encourage wildlife into my garden because they have really helped keep the slugs and snails down. Last year I used petroleum jelly on the rim of my container. There were no slugs around it until it washed off. Ah, interesting, interesting idea. I think shell on earth is made from whelk shells. Okay, I will check that out. I've not heard of it, but I can see the logic. A bit like the coffee grounds. It's too sharp for slugs and snails, <coughs> excuse me, to do. Uh, I will be using homemade compost for my new potatoes in buckets this year. Do you think I should add any extra feed for them? Um, you might get away with it, but I would say that Potatoes are very, very hungry plants, so I would always add a bit of uh, potato fertilizer just to help them out. Beer traps usually work well. Uh, for, yeah, beer traps for getting rid of slugs and snails as well. And in meadows, we get so much stalk from gritters on our main roads that we never have slugs in the front garden. Back garden is different, though. Interesting, interesting. Didn't think about salt from gritters. I tried eggshells, the slugs were not bothered and still hate the plants. Yeah. And it can be better to buy a jar of instant store brand coffee to use for its caffeine content. Damn, another secret god. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that, that's why coffee plants produce caffeine because it is a, a what's the, it stops weeds from germinating, it stops seeds from germinating. That's the word I'm looking for. There is a word for it, but uh, can the nematodes link be shared? Couldn't find the cheap ones talked about just now. Uh, I'll get, was it Digwell that said about the nematodes? Got her your haircut. Um, I'll get him, Digwell, can you add the link in the Facebook group for the nematodes that you're on about, please? I think that will 
help everyone out or are you on the demo I was talking about I will find the link for and add that to the group as well at some point as I say if you're not a member of the group then please do go check it out and uh, join in the conversation so we've got a seed swap going on people are uh, looking to swap seeds and I'm happy to do that obviously um, you have to exercise a bit of caution in handing details out um, with it but if anybody does have seeds that they want to swap post it up there and get it get it shared that's all i can say on that <coughs> um, and then you have to contact each other via messenger to exchange details and i allow it but i don't want to get involved in any uh disputes shall we say it's amongst you guys uh, to sort out i know most of you are pretty good so don't have a problem Maybe we should discuss natural de remedies. I'll put that down. Natural remedies. That's a good one, actually. Natural remedies. Natural remedies. Yeah, that's another one I will add to the list. There we go. I love it when we get these brainstorming ideas to uh, get ideas for future shows. All right, guys, we're coming to the end of this week's episode. Been great chatting to you as always. Now, coming up on the podcast tomorrow, I'm going to be discussing how to grow leeks, which I know we've just done. But I'm also going to be talking about what it's really like keeping chickens. Because I know a lot of people are going to start um, thinking about keeping chickens at this time of year, especially once the ban is lifted. And I want to discuss just what it is really like and how i go about keeping them that's coming up on the podcast this week i'm hoping if you haven't seen on youtube i posted a video the other day a bit of a, a my garden week type video i'm hoping to do another one of those i struggle with videos i think i've said time and time before i don't sit down for long periods of time so for me sitting down to do a video edit a video is hard work i'm much more a, an audio person so i've i've started um trying to edit videos uh, just seen another advice so yeah hopefully that will be out this week as well um i'll add i, I should add links to our facebook page for people who want to watch that uh companion planting i have put on the list as well that's actually going to be something i want to discuss anyway because i really want to do a lot more companion planting uh, the link to Never Slugs is posted on Facebook. Uh, cheers again, Richard. Another informative as well as funny at times show. Well, I do my best, Ian. I always do my best. Uh, thank you for another great program. You are most welcome, Idaho. Thank you for all the hints and tips. I'm learning so much every week. I'm learning so much every week as well. And uh, look forward to meeting all up with you all next week. Stay safe and happy gardening and allotment tales indeed yep yeah, well i'm going to wrap this up for this week thank you so much again for joining me and joining in the conversation uh as always it's been great seeing you it's been great having a chat and we'll do it all again next sunday at 6 p.m where as i said next week it's going to be drink recipes that uh, week just to just to make things a little bit different drink recipes is what i'm looking for uh and at some point we're going to sort out and finalize the meetup the official veg grower podcast meetup but i've got to work out all the final details and get that sorted anyway that's it you take care guys we'll be back again next time so until then please take care <laughs>